listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistoski, right here on LA Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jared Zavistoski, and you're listening to Modern Mail Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the stuff your daddy never knew. And joining me tonight, we've got some special guests, Isis and Mia Isabella. And Sarah Chapman is back with us again. Hi. She's always filling the spare seat. It's great. Uh, so I never have to be in here talking to myself. You know, because push comes to so- shove, sometimes people don't show up for their shows. Is that all I'm here for? You know for? who you are. I'm a filler. Just not not at all. <laughs> not at all. You're a great co-host. Uh, it's funny because you look on some of the YouTube uh, comments on some of the other previous co-hosts. Uh-oh. Well, we won't mention names, but the uh, it, it made me decide never to get an official co-host again. Oh, okay. I'm so. changing that. We're good. Yeah. There, there was a, a, a lot of good stuff on YouTube. So I have with us uh, two lovely ladies. Or, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how to go about this politically correct. Um, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is offend anybody. Okay. But what had happened was mm-hmm. uh, I was, I think I was scoping you out on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I was scoping you out on Tinder. And I had no idea that they were uh, transgender. <laughs> is that correct? So to say. Which is a testament to how amazing your, your you know, your, your skills are. Like Your skills. <laughs> their beauty. Astounding build, beauty. Really. Beauty. But, I mean, like, if I dressed up as a girl, I'd be a hideous fucking woman. I think you'd be yeah. very attractive. Oh, no. Yeah. No. I think because we should do an experiment. See, she knows. Yeah. Keep, keep the beard, though. I think that would be a very attractive woman. Really? Yeah. Just with a wig? It's a new thing. Just yeah. do it up? Come yeah. to Okay. Just a burly woman. <laughs> so I'm going to apologize in advance if I say anything offensive or, or uh, tactless because I'm trying to get into new ground here. I don't understand this at all. But uh, this whole Bruce Jenner thing's coming up, and you know, it's something that immediately I thought, like, you know, when when Caitlyn it, Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Case Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. Jenner, when when this whole thing came up, the last thing I wanted to do is be like, oh well, fuck you, like I'm not gonna talk to you now because you guys, because you girls are different than me. Mm-hmm. Immediately I was like, wait, so like, what's that gotta be like? You know, how many guys nice. hit on you or or are talking to you, and then they find <laughs> out that you were born a man, and they flip out and get really mean to you. Well, no. we were born as a baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get assigned a gender at birth. So that's that's the thing. And then we become the woman or the person that we want to be. And that's usually how it goes. But how okay. amazing is that, right? To be able to like transform yourself to be exactly yeah. what you want, who you want to be. So you said no. So you get a lot of guys that hit on you and then they're like... I've never had a guy hit on me and not want to still date me. There we go. Yeah. There we go. That's See, misconceptions <laughs> are just being shot out the it's okay. shot out the window. This is a good space for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you know what? And we, we did get dating in the gay community, um, and which is it's, it, it's interesting because you guys all kind of get lumped into the same category, but you're not gay. No. You would identify. <laughs> but that's that's huge for somebody like, you know, for, right. for a straight guy to, to sit here and think about that. I'm like, wait, so the I, I feel like the community wants to lump that whole thing lbgt uh into the same category and you've always identified as a woman yeah of course especially so, in youth when you're learning about gender identity and what position you play in society i think most young transgender people would say that they knew their chosen role mm-hmm. very very early on for me it was four years old yeah okay yeah. I just I grabbed Tonka trucks and killed everything. And <laughs> I burned I like, everything. Yeah, I, in the mud I could see that about you, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I burned everything. Like it, if it was plastic and it could light on fire, I lit it on fire and I stuck it together and it was bad. Uh, <laughs> I was I was a, a very tenacious little child. So yeah, I, I in order to be in, you know very uh, politically correct tonight. Um, because we're we're actually expanding Monomel Radio and this is we're getting syndicated and this is actually going mm-hmm. places now. Um, okay. So, uh, what is the difference between transgender, transsexual, and a crossdresser? Transgender and transsexual are the similar terms. It's pretty much the same terminology. A crossdresser is someone who doesn't have any um, transformative, you know, work done. Any hormone therapy. Strictly dresses as female for sexual kicks. And okay. And typically, they're heterosexual white males that love to dress in women's clothing. Yeah. And I've come across quite a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite a few. And sometimes they look really good. They do, um, sometimes. Uh, but it's also very challenging for them because majority of the, the society shames them into, like, not sharing that. Mm-hmm. And so they don't share it with anyone until they get married. And then the wife is stuck with something that they don't understand. Mm-hmm. But if they do and accept it, then the, that relationship will flourish. Like, I'm sure that there are cases out there where... Um, 
they actually have um, mm. a better understanding for each other. Have you heard about that? Yeah, no, I have. A, awesome. a, we had a guest <laughs> on. Uh, she does. Uh, she was, she's a dominatrix and she's really big oh, in BDSM. Just but kidding. she's like nice. super, <laughs> super <laughs> feminine. <laughs> and like you should, she's like Sarah, but she's a dominatrix. Uh -oh. And her oh, husband. <laughs> Did I just get called out on something that I <laughs> might require a whip for? Or? And her husband's like six, <laughs> four, <laughs> like super, yeah. like you would never, ever, ever know that on the weekends he likes to dress as a woman. And they have a very, very open sexual relationship and stuff. And it's really interesting to be friends with them because I get to, you know, kind of like see all of this. Cra uh, calling it crazy is probably the wrong a word. A unique dynamic. Yeah, a unique dynamic. Dynamic. I like that. Do you like that? Dynamic. I'm going to pat myself on the shoulder. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So is there, are there any other terminologies that are offensive to you out the gate? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, well, from the adult point, uh, the adult industry standpoint, being an adult performer in that world a long time ago, you know, that mm -hmm. that term is the main search term for pornography containing transsexual people. So, you know, a lot of people in the adult industry usually are in an uproar about it because it's considered derogatory. But at the same time, that is the niche market name for that genre of pornography. So, I mean, if you just yell out at someone, hey, tranny, I mean, of course, <laughs> you're not saying it in a, in a way yeah. that is, you know. Nice. I, I have a lot of girlfriends actually that like they'll get called that. We'll go out, they put on a ton of makeup, oh, you know, like the stereotypical <laughs> whatever. I don't even thing. like saying the word, yeah. but yeah, like I've heard I've heard men so wait, call that. Tranny is a bad word. It's a terrible word. Is it? Yeah. So that's, it would be that's it would whether be you're really transgender mm -hmm. or not and you might happen to have a look that okay. people in society think is Why is that a bad word? Awful. Why is that offensive? Is it because of the the, the connotation, of course, the way you're the way they're actually the saying way it. they're saying it? Yeah, of course. So it's kind of like the N word to black people or the F word to gay people. Yeah. yeah. So basically, mm. like words that are used during hate crimes are typically She's words like, yeah. that we don't <laughs> like, like to this. use. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, sorry, even, I, I don't I have a penis, but <laughs> I have penis envy, and so that's where we're gonna draw the line on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what is it's a good it, line to you, draw. If, if only you had a dick, that. Sarah. If only. Um, My best friend in Orange County would be real happy. She's just in love with me. <laughs> Hi, Beanie. <laughs> so, Hi, Beanie. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, so we just got off that one. Um, so yeah, don't use it. Fine, so, I'm gonna try not to use it. Okay, no, this is good. This is good. Uh, it, it, it's smart, but so it is. So trendy short for transgender, right? I mean, so it's kind of like a different category there because gay or fag isn't short for anything. It's just a, a you shitty can, word. You can skirt your way around it. Any is other it? Way you, <laughs> want to. you know what I mean? No matter what kind of you know idea, or it's still considered derogatory. It's not like saying okay. Target for you, Target. You, right. you can't like <laughs> change it. What if we took the Y off the end and it was just trans? No. Well, no? There, you can say trans. <laughs> trans? Yeah, or transgender, or okay. a trans woman of color. Like I am. It's like the A on the end of the N word. As opposed to the R on the end of the N word. Can we just not do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things that we can have loopholes for, but like derogatory terms, really not so Usually much. Not. Yeah. Fair mean, enough. Sorry. Until until you know something else becomes a derogatory term, then we run out of terms. Then we just make and up we new ones, and then we call just you keep people, doing this. You know, <laughs> a human. Yeah. Right. We don't need a, an actual label for you. It's like, oh hey, per other person who breathes and and eats and you know has wishes, wants, and desires that I know nothing about. Or how about how many you know? guys that like don't know your name and they're just like, hey, you. And no matter who you are. Hey, like, you. You know, same name. Out there in the name. club, always doing. Well, I, don't, I, no. I was going to go somewhere with that, but <laughs> I can't sing too well. So when you guys stop talking, it just. Actually, it, he sings really well. <laughs> Does he? I've heard quite a few songs this oh, yeah. week. I, I heard that. I can oh, yeah. hear it. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's yes. got good pitch. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's musical theater right there. Um, uh -huh. But if you wanted to correctly apply like terminology to people. Um, people who are cisgendered women are typically people that are born c uh, in alignment with who they are now, like as a woman. Um, basically parallel or in align with. And then mm -hmm. trans would be someone who's intersecting, like contrary to what they were born as. So you guys don't consider yourself transgender anymore. You guys consider yourself women. Well, I like to think I'm a lady. A lady. Yay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, it's, that. it's funny for me because I never live my life ever thinking of myself as, in my daily life or routine, as a trans woman. I just think of myself as a woman only okay. when I do media or things where people are celebrating it or wanting to be educated. Do I find myself like, oh, yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> that's great. I think that's really, really great. And you've got I some. I just have so much respect. Honestly. You've got Thank quite you. a few accolades going for you. Uh, you're the first uh, f- uh, transgender uh, person to have ever done a, a video game voiceover, yeah. right? Is for that Grand Theft Auto Five. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. 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 Go, yeah. yeah, it was pretty fun. It was a really great project. Now, does it make it? Does it kind of irritate you that it's like, got to be like the first transgender thing or? No, you don't give a shit. I think that's amazing. Just be- I didn't do the project because of any other reasons, but to like break a boundary for the community itself. Mm-hmm. And so when they made a big deal about me doing it, I was like, well, that's really awesome. But it was just a fun project to do in general. It was a great team of people, engineers, and of course, it's a billion dollar video game. So right, yeah. you can't really beat that. Can't yeah. really be like, oh, special treatment. That. Oh well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, and it was fun. It was a really good thing. It was a, a cool project to do. Like I said. So growing up, I'm sure that there had to be like. I mean, it's, I just, I think about, like, I try and put myself in those shoes and I go, what would you, what would your life be like if you had literally been born in, into a body that wasn't conducive with how you felt about yourself? And it's like, there are a lot of, there's a lot of stuff wrong with, with a lot of different people. You know, people are born with, with abnormalities and, you know, mutations and stuff like that. But it's like, what would it be like to be completely normal and to also be locked into a body that didn't agree with, you know, society or norms or anything, you know, anything that you wanted. I, and it doesn't even agree with, uh, you know, the procreational factors or whatever. Uh, it's, well, can you just imagine how uncomfortable that would be to, like, live your daily existence and be like, this isn't fair. I don't like this. This is uncomfortable for me. Yeah. It like, makes me unhappy. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> like, to look at yourself and feel... Now, do you guys ever... Did, did, <clears throat> How was the development process growing up? Like, it's did given you for every every trans person. Exactly. Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everyone huh. has their own story, but eventually, okay. like, it's it's clumped into just one like category, just so people can understand it. But everyone experiences their life as a trans woman or a trans man in their own little ways. So. I think that's really important to point out because we're yeah. not just one size fits all. Even mm-hmm. if we have a label that of course. is shared, every woman is not the same woman just because she's a woman. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. She didn't grow into her herself by the same means any other woman. That's a really good point. Yeah. So, I, what, what was the struggle like for you then, and what was the struggle like for Why you? Why does everyone always think it's a struggle? Struggle. Was it a struggle? <laughs> no. Because I, because you know I, what, you hear, I, I would have struggled. Stereotypically, with it. stereotypically, people imagine that every trans person has a very ho- uh, horror story. In a lot of ways, yes, I, I have learned as I got older, and I actually met my first trans friends when I was 18. Like these women had different struggles with coming out and being able to be themselves. I never had that. I was lucky enough to have really supportive parents and family that were really afraid of what society might do if I was to express myself. So in order to allow me the freedom, they were very protective of me. So a lot of the challenges many trans women fe- you know, oh, faced, wow, okay. I didn't actually face those. And mm-hmm. when I got older, I got to learn so much. And every story is extremely uniquely different. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Well, bravo for your parents. <laughs> yeah. And what about you? Mine's kind of the opposite, (laughs) (laughs) which is very unfortunate. But, like, I come from an Asian family. Like, we're very strict in our own, like, gender roles and norms way. But, I mean, but my family is very loving. But at the same time, like, they're not to demean my family or deflate them in any way. But, like, as much as I love them, sometimes it's hard to be a trans because sometimes in their eyes it's catastrophic to the culture. To to their culture, their reputation, things that matter to an Asian family. Um, so throughout most of my childhood, it was more oppressed. Um, I tried to assimilate myself into a role that didn't fit mm-hmm. me, and that, that basically pretty much put um, a mental barrier on me and like exceeding in my life. So that's how that goes. So I had to really unpackage everything. Do you both have siblings, or are you only kids? Oh my or? God, I am one of 14. Oh, oh wow. Geez. Yeah, I'm my mother's eldest and my father's baby. That's amazing right there. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. I couldn't yeah. imagine having so many siblings. I didn't I know that was, like, we didn't have that many until, you know, recently. So. <laughs> oh, cool, though. Yeah. My dad's been pretty busy. How exciting. <laughs> yeah. Go <laughs> daddy. But you know what, though? Like, the ability to come over those barriers, it takes a day-to-day journey. Exactly. You know, every, like, every woman doesn't get to go out and, and just be that flower that they see themselves. It takes time to develop yep. living in your woman's self and being in your form. And you have to separate yourself from family a lot of times because this is a unique experience that you are choosing mm-hmm. to go through. And you have to separate yourself from any situation that makes you feel less than because you're never gonna break that barrier to bloom like you're supposed to. Exactly. It's a very, it's a very. So it's, who is your, your support system when that, obviously you first were experiencing that? Did you have really good friends or did you take yourself out of 
the school that you were in or something? I mean, um, were there? Actually, because I'm Asian, I'm kind of a geek. I love books. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually resorted to books before YouTube was around and mm -hmm. before like anyone really like, before there was um, a vocabulary for any of us to speak about this, it was just um, whatever was in the adult industry as well as whatever was mm -hmm. um, pinned on like Jerry Springer or Mari as something that's, <laughs> sure. that's so kind silly. of, yeah, super silly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I used books and that's how I learned who I wanted to be and that's what I'm doing. Well, no one can take that from you. Education is something that cannot be taken from you. Yeah, and I mean, right now Bravo. you guys are you guys are kind of fighting the. <laughs> it, 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 this is the civil rights. This is our generation's civil rights movement. It seems that way. It seems like it's. I mean, it's out of nowhere too. I mean, it's. I mean, I've watched it develop in the adult industry, mm -hmm. which was original standpoint for people to kind of view us as a community. It's sad to say, but that's sexual. People yeah. sexualize us. Um, oh, which is something that we're going to talk about. Oh, here definitely, in a of course, it's a huge thing. And what people don't understand is that gay men are not attracted to trans women. Gay men are attracted to ma masculinity. Mm -hmm. Straight men are attracted to femininity. So if you see a beautiful curvy trans woman, if it's it <laughs> would be you are gay if you don't find her sexually attractive. If she's in the form, <laughs> oh, in the form I mean, we're built as the epitome of an oversexualized female in, in most cases. Most you know trans women really overdo their beauty and go above and beyond. So if you don't find that exaggerated feminine form and body and look to be something sexual, then you're gay. Okay. So you're not that, a straight man. What <laughs> an mm -hmm. awesome now argument whether, that Now, whether was. you're into the genitalia or not, that's something that gets in a gray area, and people's sexuality is different for each person. But mm -hmm. the idea of seeing a beautiful trans woman and, and not being attracted to her would mean, in fact, that you probably like men. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> there is a little gray area as, as all, in all things in sexuality. Wow. So all of our straight l listeners out Sorry. there right now, just you just dropped a, a bomb on them. They're, all, all of their brains are going, geez. <laughs> so, so it's okay. It's, it's, it's really <laughs> like, okay. So it's okay. Don't feel ashamed. Well, yeah, I yeah. think I think that that's definitely a, a good point. Is it should be okay, you know? And that was one of the points that I wanted to make when this whole thing happened. Like, I wanted to get on the, the air and be like, "Hey, I totally thought you guys were girls," uh, or "I'm sorry, you guys are girls." <laughs> totally but, thought, uh, totally thought that you had vaginas. <clears throat> there you go. Yes. Yeah, he saw me out with a <clears throat> mutual friend, uh, adult performer, or former adult performer on our social media stuff. I think is initially. Yeah. Where I, I got to see who you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should uh, actually clear that up. Not that you have vaginas, that you were born with vaginas, because I don't know, if, you know what I mean, what stage That's of anything. That's true. So, <laughs> yeah. True. That, that is a good point, because, uh, yeah, my brain went there, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Calm me up. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're breaking down those walls, and th so there are so many good, good points that we just got on. Um, and one is that, yeah, it's okay. Like, it's okay for anybody to do what they want to do uh, in life. And it's, it's okay life. for you guys <laughs> to be who you want to be. And it's okay for other people who might not understand that to still like that and to still, you know, uh, not just accept the fact that you're different, like they're tolerating it, but to actually celebrate that and be a fan of that and to, to push humanity? that. Humanity? Yeah. Yeah. In we're general? We're a fan of humanity. <laughs> um, and then the other thing we're is the sexualization thereof, that yeah. it's like, I think that a lot of it comes like, when, when you talk to really homophobic straight males, they'll immediately, they'll be like, well, I mean, I'm cool with it as long as you don't hit on me. And it's like, <laughs> what makes you think, like... That you're even cute enough. There you go. <laughs> Usually gay guys have really high standards. They're like, my gay friends are... Yeah, they look like Amber Crabbe and Fitch yeah. fucking models. It's oh, insane. most of my ex-boyfriends. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. <clears throat> she had to put you on blast. Sure did. No, but I mean, the, the sexualization of it is, it's... I think it's inappropriate because it's made a sexual issue. I think that, that at least from my perspective, what I've heard on it, how I felt, and how I've, what I've seen about it, it's very, uh, it, it's very, very crass and sexual in nature. It's like I'm not the. It, it all has to all the judgment and the hatred and the anything. It all boils down to sex. It's not. It seems that way. Yeah. In a lot of ways, yeah. I just I think that it's it is over sexualized and maybe I'll I'll come to a better uh, formulation of that thought in a minute. Yeah, well, isn't it interesting that the one of the top and highest paying genres of pornography is and has been for over a decade transgender pornography and me being one of the top stars in that world, I actually got to see that go on for a decade. She making that money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I've actually seen it, and my, my demographic was generally um, young. Caucasian males from the age of 20 to 40. They mm -hmm. were uh, college educated and usually were over $100,000 a year salaries or, long or more. So these are highly educated men. And those usually would be those stereotypical group that people would think would be transphobic. But those are the huh. biggest fans. They're the ones that are embracing 
very embracing. Well, that's because they're the <laughs> smartest. You just called it out. I witnessed your moment. I was into it. It's really hot in here. Yeah, I got a little bit. Why are you so hot for? I'm done. It must be the hair. I'm sorry. So, how do you feel about gay marriage? It's kind of an it's kind of an oxymoron because you 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 never identify yourself as gay, right? Well, we just covered that. I have been legally married before, and I am I identified and legally all formats. Female. So it never it doesn't even apply to you. So guys, I've never even, girls. well, and, no. and the most from some trans women that maybe their identif- identification and things like that haven't been transferred over to be female. So in those cases, they can't have those benefits. But oh. I never encountered that part. No. I think anybody who's in love that wants to be with their partner for the rest of their life, it's their right Should to do so. Them. Is yeah. that dependent? Is that transfer of identification? Is that dependent on the sex change? Or is it just... In some states, in, in some states, um, via Social Security Administration, as long as you have documentation to show hormone therapy treatments that you're transforming your gender and things like of that nature, you can legally transform everything over. So gay marriage didn't even affect you guys? Well, well, again, depends on your identification. How ah. much DMV you go to? <laughs> <laughs> no DMV is good to go to. Right, no. No. <laughs> None. All DMVs suck equally. It's about as Aww. good as calling AT&T when you need something. <laughs> Just disappointment. Well, I heard is Canada um, has been legalized gay marriage for a long time. Yeah. So I didn't even know that until recently. They yeah, Canada's always ahead of us with the socialist issues. You didn't see issues. That way. I'm pretty sure they mm-hmm. also cover um, SRS surgery too. I think they've been doing that for a while. I think yeah. I've known that much. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about the marriage part. It's gotta. It's just gotta be like a lot on your plate. I mean, or is it? Is it? Is it? I mean, it is. you I make mean, it you're s- transforming yourself into what you see mentally, this picture of you, okay, and your form, and it takes time. It takes steps. It doesn't happen overnight. I think the biggest misconception that a lot of people took from Caitlyn Jenner's transformation was that this was something that was done overnight it was definitely not she's had trachea shaves way before any of the public knew about it had feminization uh, procedures done over time and then took a long hiatus away from anything in public eye to finish those transformations it's not something that's done and i believe also she did hormone therapy back in the early 90s as well so much work and pain to get to a place where you feel you exactly you feel like you deserve to be there well, you know, other people are just born that way, and it's like you have to go through all of these hoops to get to a place to that get other people take for granted. Especially yeah. granted. Yeah, figure, and then though, to be to shot to down. That, yeah, to be told that you don't deserve to live what you've challenged and made yourself through. And that's it's just horrible. so sad because it's yeah. like everyone that's horrible. been watching Caitlyn as not Caitlyn before, yeah. it's like their perception, their expectation mm-hmm. changed. So then all of a sudden she's not allowed to be who she really is because we're used to seeing something exactly. that's not. And I think yeah. that was the brilliant part that she also did uh, in coming and doing uh, a lot of major media before or did the, the big interview that was I watched. I forgot who aired it. Yeah. ABC, right? I have no idea. Um, well, anyway, when I was seeing that, uh, I was glad that she actually showed herself in the male form before, there was a reason for that. That was honoring her fans and the people that knew that person because that person was being essentially laid to rest for her yeah. moving forward in her life. So I think it was really important for you know, her fans and to be able to bring them into this journey with her to show herself that way and say, look, this is my plea, this is who I am. I'm gonna do this regardless of what anybody thinks, but I'm, I'm wanting to honor the people that have been there for me, the organizations that mm. have supported me based on my talents, not my gender preference. Okay. That's yeah, because she didn't need to yeah. do that at all. So that really was for yeah, yeah, for the public, that for fans. Is yeah. it ever kind of fun and liberating, or is it? I mean, it to me from the outside, it'd be like, oh, it's a shit ton of work and plastic surgery and and bullshit that you have to go through. It doesn't seem like it'd be fun, but maybe it could be a little like. Are you kidding me? I'm like, <laughs> like you're decorating a house. I was born you know? female, and it's still no matter what. <laughs> a shit ton of work and a shit ton of yes, surgery yeah. expected and, and, and in general padded yeah. bras and these are real and hey. <laughs> guys are like why don't you get your boobs done and I'm like she fuck you they're because done. they're Natural. I can just push them up you can, you can just, them. thank you <laughs> I like yours thank you <laughs> you can take it back to like and that happens <laughs> so many things are happening okay uh, you can take it back to like puberty like it's basically going through puberty again but in crammed in like a few years oh, I was such a late bloomer like, me I too you see do you, <laughs> isn't it Puberty sucked. Yeah. So, so, so basically like the same thing. Yeah. You're very yeah. hormonal. <laughs> things happen again. Um, the other thing is like, I don't want us to gloss over the fact that um, Caitlyn Jenner can transition a lot faster than anyone else that than anyone else besides her. Because she's very privileged in her own way and she makes a lot of money. Sure. And there are people who can't even make enough money and get paid 
anything or even get a job. So that's one thing that it does. The transformation was very, very quick. And I'm sure in other countries, this is, you know, uh, more, more acceptable. But then in other, some other countries, I'm sure it's like, well, the funny thing is (laughs) Caitlyn Jenner wasn't the first of her peers to do this in the past couple of years. There's a billionaire tycoon who's a trans woman who is like one of the top engineer executives in that industry that's worth billions of dollars that was all over the financial magazines transformed into herself it didn't make that much attention as her because she's attached to a very pop iconic family mm-hmm. at the moment there's a chicago billionaire billionaire herself who her family is one of the biggest um wealthy real estate tycoon families in chicago in the midwest who also did the same thing who was in the military as well and is fighting for military rights for trans as well Kaylin Jenner's not the first to appear to do this in the past couple of years at all. Yeah, yeah. Might I point out? It just reminded us how much work that we still need to do in unpackaging our gender roles and norms in general. Yeah, you guys are the freedom fighters right now. It's incredible. You're on the front lines. You see it. What's happening right now? Yeah. Then it's 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 crazier to think in ten years, twenty years, this conversation will be irrelevant, and people will be (laughs) like. Oh, when was that not normal? I'm when like, was I, that I not surely acceptable? hope so. I hope it's so- way sooner than that. Well, look at it like this. 50 years ago, slaves still existed. That, yeah. that was real, or segregation at least. Yeah, uh, segregation. Uh, what was it? Women couldn't vote until what, the 60s, the 70s? Something like that? Oh, no. I don't want to put facts. I don't know. 1920s, I think. Somewhere no, wait. They could oh, vote. When was the women's rights movement? That was in the 60s. We'd have to Google it. Okay. I, 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 I'll fail. Hashtag yeah, fail. I might. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. I, I had we had a show on here, and I completely misquoted this Latin phrase, and I was like, I w- was watching it back, and I was like, that's not what. And we're not going means. on Jeopardy next week. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean it's crazy because I, you know, my brain doesn't function this way. So to actually sit here and talk to three different people at the same time and try and keep a show going and think about where I want to direct this thing, three this different, is that's not me, guys. Gorgeous ladies. Just <laughs> What do you I mean, see some of the other stuff we're making? There's like tits everywhere. Too. Oh my goodness. I just realized oh, let me that. Cover my there head. are. Yeah, no, that's horrible too. No, bring too. them out. <laughs> let those puppies breathe. I'm being attacked. It's 95 degrees <laughs> no outside. Just because oh Jared God, can't take I his shirt know. off. It's I hot know. outside. It's so hot. I was just like, I'm going to put this crop top on. You be can't. lucky you don't have breasts right now. It is kind of warm in here. I'm just going <laughs> to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh. But you have flowers. <laughs> a little hot. Can we yeah, do, can actually, we talk yeah, about let's our flowers? do that. Oh, my God. And thank you so, so much. How You're romantic. Welcome. This is like our first date. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's a good You're orgy welcome. on this show. He's like, what do you like, black or white? I'm like, I'm going to go for the sleek black. And then I saw that they were roses. Well done. You're thank, welcome. Thank you, Flora's Oath. Yeah. Uh, so you can find these guys at floresoath.com. You can find them uh, on Instagram at Flora's Oath. Uh, my covering. That's, yeah, it'll all be all over the website and stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, they sponsor us with these awesome flowers, and uh, they make our, my guests incredibly happy. Because so. they're pink they're so today, pink especially. Yeah. Very happy. <laughs> and they come in these, like, pink. super awesome boxes. Yeah. That even after the flower dies, you know, you can use that box. For, <laughs> yes. I don't know what you Putting put a little in there. These we actually stuff. have to take care of because these aren't the ones that die. I'm like, trying to think of what would fit in there. Don't, don't say it. You can make, like, <laughs> a drumstick. You can make, like, a jewelry box. Oh, I'd make it, like, a jewelry yeah. box. Yes. Right? Good one. Yeah. yeah, you could put some necklaces in there. You put a little hook up there. Make I could put my money Organize in here. Organize your makeup in it. Better have my money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you see that video? That's so problematic. Oh, my goodness. It's Actually, so I haven't seen it. Did uh, I just what? accidentally quote some Tumble. song that's terrible? No, well, it's not terrible. Mm. I don't really like the song. I just think it's really Is it an offensive video? Of course. I love the song. Video. I love it's, the it's song, It's a great too. song. Rihanna has well, a dark I mean, side to her. She has a really edgy kind of yeah, side to her that she likes just, to play with every once in a while. I'd rather promote, like, Loving, I don't know if it's just me being Asian <laughs> or, or growing up Buddhist, but like I'd rather promote that as opposed to like hurting someone else in general. Definitely. I like Ron Bean's music. We could talk about his, his song. <laughs> <Speechless. laughs> Rihanna, I love that. It up. That's great. <laughs> no. <coughs> I love it. So it's interesting because I, I, I'm the, the roles, uh, you know, I, I keep thinking like now you're here and I get to ask you these questions directly and I'm like, all of these these things start coming up. So like when it comes to like even the biblical stuff, like Christianity, and they're so against gay, you know, male male on male, uh, you know, loving, uh, or you know, fucking whatever. Shit just got serious. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. Um, I'm hiding under the table. Religion. <laughs> it, yeah, and usually I don't speak on religion. At you all. guys actually kind of like, does it count? I mean, depends where you're at. Because I'm, I feel like I feel like people can use and justify, 
almost any form of hatred out of religion. It's kind of like just that. That's the yeah. opposite direction that religion was actually created for. It's like they say the Old Testament is thrown out when it doesn't meet their needs, but then they use the Old Testament to be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this to screw your freedoms because I don't. It's, it's this weird double standard and justifications. If everybody just went by the New Testament, you might as well just buy the secret, and you know, you're good to go. <laughs> uh, you know. G I, live, I live in a continuous fairy tale, and in my fairy tale, it's all love. Ooh, me too. And whatever, whoever that I believe in, that my relationship with spiritually is, I think would love me completely, because I think I'm pretty incredible. And I have it here. I'm here for a purpose. Cheers so. to that. There you go. Yeah. Um, to educate and teach people. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And you do co college speeches, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do that, too. I haven't started yet. That's really oh. amazing. Um, I, I love that Laverne does that, too. Yes. She yes. does it a lot. I did it at UCSB, and I spoke to people about, like, how, like well, first off, uh, the reason how I knew how like, I was going to transition is because I did performance, performance art. So I did um, drag for a few years. So I taught people how to love themselves first before they actually start doing something. So that's one thing that I always like to remind people of what to do when it comes to doing the speeches. So start start inside. Love yeah. yourself. The same as what yeah. Marty did said. You have to love yourself before you can actually do anything else. And we shouldn't be patronized or shamed for doing that. Yeah, I, I start with the exact same approach when it comes to coaching guys. Uh, you know, men on. Uh, That's right. Uh, you do. Yeah. You do coaching. You have a book as well. Yes. Yes. It takes it takes a uh, lot of work for some people to love themselves I, really like on a yeah. daily basis because there are days when I get up and I'm just like oh that's you again I'm looking in the mirror and then I'm like <laughs> okay we're here we're gonna just move it on up we're gonna do something to make me feel good I'm gonna order some Eat Twenty Four. Love Eat Twenty Four. That's so good. <laughs> <She's> like, oh. <laughs> we're we're the same. We're baking cookies or we're <laughs> like I was like <laughs> croissants. Yeah. No. We're trying to uh, to rope them into sponsoring us. I really love Eat Twenty Four. Get on them. I, I, I love I me order too. Every day. They're gonna, they're getting there. What's we're that? Like I order from them every day. Every day. Me too. Every day. Something. And I'm loyal to Eat Twenty Four. Whoa. Grubhub. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> You didn't even just say the GH word. It was all E24. Yeah, what? What? <laughs> what? What was that? Yeah, what are what um, are your favorite foods? Let's just like have like a normal I love Thai food. Thank you. I love pasta. You're welcome. I love seafood. I love pretty much all kinds of food. Soul food, especially southern food. I'm a huge foodie, so I really can't discriminate. I'm like getting my belly. <laughs> and yeah, you're going on Instagram. <laughs> Done. I don't know. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. That's funny. Jared's like, don't take pictures of your food. And I'm like, okay, I'm not. I do it all the one. time. I just posted a lunch thing. Shout out to Urban Ramen for an amazing lunch. Thanks, guys. Ooh, what awesome. is it? Is it what's Urban Ramen? It's a ramen place. They do like I love sushi ramen. And everything. It's amazing. It's on Sunset. Okay, going mm. there. Nice. Promoting them. So, <laughs> not to not to thank Sarah for being like, hey, let's have a normal conversation and making this <laughs> making Sorry. my my line of questioning in un normal. Sorry about it. <laughs> but uh, I I can't. I mean, you guys seem so well adjusted and you know ready to be here and speak about this. And I'm sure that there are a lot of other people who aren't. Then what would you say to them? Mm. If you had a message for people watching this right now, uh, you know, who are maybe thinking about it or whatever. Uh, about like transitioning? Yeah. Um, take your time. <laughs> Words that out of my mouth, yeah. Like uh, it shouldn't be rushed. It should be something that you understand yourself. And typically you just know. And mm. it's, like, it's like the way I think Oprah said it, like you should strive to be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing and, and taking it our, to our own, own hands. And that's should be inspirational enough for them. Yeah. So take their time. I just thought of like getting tattoos when you just said that. Because I'm like, those are the two things that I regret the most in my life because they're permanent. I can't, I mean, I can get them taken off, but it's a process. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. thing, so. But yeah, that's a big change. I would say everything is going to be fine. Like, you take your time. Everything is going to be fine. You're going to get to be the person that you want to be. You're going to get to be that individual that you see inside just take your time be patient and don't rush yeah and don't be don't be impatient with it take your time is there a backlash from that when yeah um yeah. like silicone injections and things like that that's yeah. that can get really nasty really oh, fast yeah. and a lot of people can die from it like someone whom i used to like really idolize a lot erica andrews um not that that was the case but she passed away and that's just something that or like I dealing with regret or dealing with like, I went too far too soon and now I'm going to come back, you know, like when people do with addictions. It's mm -hmm. something you always deal with in, in transforming yourself medically anyway. It doesn't matter if you're transgender or not. True. I have plenty you know. of girlfriends that yeah. have had breast implants and they've gone wrong. or Yeah, with quick fixes <laughs> that <laughs> are never there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no joke. joke. And and I'm like, it's you know, no laughing your matter. It's your vehicle. This, yeah. is a, this is what you have to Drive live your life. purpose. So yeah. you need to take care of it no matter That's what you're doing. That's very important too. Also being able to take care of the changes that you make because some people will 
take that for granted. They're like, okay, it's done. I don't have to do anything more. And it's like, no, you get your breasts done. You have to take care of those breasts. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you were born with a penis or a vagina, Wait, what? learn how to take care of your breast implants, you have massage them, all this stuff. I don't know because I don't have them, what? but I've done a lot yeah. of research into it. You have it. to change yeah. them every 10 years, I think. Yeah, and you have yeah. to be very careful because of stretch marks. It's really... Mm. What? Yeah, so <laughs> all of the stuff I didn't what know. What you're gonna have to do for maintenance <laughs> after you make those <laughs> major changes. Interesting. And a lot of money. So yes. I mean, aside from this just being an awesome show on dating and stuff, uh, some of our male listeners might be wondering, you know, what the deal is. And in the intro of the book, when I actually kind of like describe what a modern male is, uh, I think people kind of lose that part. They're like, oh, well, that's a coiny term. But it, it comes from the word metrosexual, which I, I actually I don't like because of the, the sexual connotation in it. Building fucker. Um, I just think of that every time you say it. <laughs> yeah, I see that picture in my head. I'm like, oh, that's that's a very graphic picture. Because you read his book. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about this before <laughs> you were in the other room that yeah. she read your book in what? like four hours something like I was that. like it took me four weeks books. <laughs> I read books I love books it's it's very impressed it's um, very good. <laughs> but so modern male basically boils down to a forward-thinking male in a heteropolitan <laughs> area Terrible. and we've gotten into cosmetic stuff a lot we've gotten into like the dating stuff when it when it's uh you know specific to women um we've gotten into or specific to uh male female I'm just there's nothing I could say that I won't put my foot in my mouth right now <laughs> but we've we've gotten into that that's very specific to cultural norms and aside from talking about uh, something that's outside of cultural norms, I also want to talk about within those cultural norms uh, the value of empathy and compassion. And it's this isn't this isn't like you feel sorry for you know you don't, you, you don't want to be like oh I pity you for being different. Uh, <laughs> that's not it. Just part of being a modern male is being open, understanding, engaging, and to actually take something in and you have the responsibility of thinking about it, rationalizing it, emotionalizing it, and then figuring out how you are independently going to deal with this, this issue in your mind. Um, you know, and, and not according to society standards, not according to what other people think, and not according to what you might be afraid to do. In fact, what you're afraid to do is most probably the direction that you should push in because that's what's gonna expand your mind more. That's what's gonna, gonna teach you how to be a better human being. That's what you're gonna learn from and grow from. So, you know, for, for, for my dudes out there, you know, dude it along. Like, <laughs> dudeing it along? Did you just along. say that? <laughs> yeah, that you happened. Did. Dude it along. You know, take I'm some time to talk to somebody who's maybe not in your social circle or maybe Throwing not it along. Some, somebody that you, you don't understand or something that you don't understand completely. And that can really open your mind. And, uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can grow from that as a human being. And, you know, in, in any relationship, like, compassion is attractive. Uh, empathy is attractive. True. It doesn't make you, uh, you know, a wussy or a spineless, you know, like it, it, it doesn't make you an effeminate man to, to care and take care of your fellow human race and to love the people around you no matter what they are. It's okay to have a softer side. I, I wouldn't even call it a softer side. I don't, I don't, I don't well, see that as soft. Is sensitive, so I mean, you know, Isn't that the reality of being a king, though, in, of your own life and your own journey is to evaluate experiences and situations the way that you choose to. Mm -hmm. As you said, not according to society, not according to what your friends think because you are a man that's in control of your own life. You're the king of your world mm -hmm. and you're allowed to do as you please. Not yeah, hurt I'll, anyone. I'll even redefine it. I'll write it in a book. <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh, so none of you guys think that way. Next week. That's cool. Tomorrow I'm going to go and I'm going to redefine this word and publish a book. So now who's like, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's the way I work. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Like, oh, all of you think that. That's cool. Well, I'm going to prove you stupid. Here comes the methodology um, of the compassionate macho male or something. No, I, you know, I, I really, I, I feel like there are so many bad, uh, like, it's, I go back to the word training. There are terrible uh, connotations. There are terrible, terrible connotations with macho and compassion, and there are terrible connotations Even with sensitive. Even when I said sensitive. soft, you were like, uh -uh. And I'm like, soft is a good word for me. Like, I don't see anything wrong with saying soft. Yeah, but males side. always feel like that makes them less of. It does, he totally does. Which is why he right. said wussy, you know. And I'm like, wussies are fine. Like, what's wrong with that? But yeah, I like the word care. I like the word care, care in, the, in, the, word. in the simplest sense, to care for something, you know, yeah. to cultivate something. Like you're you're caring for uh, a plant, a an, a an animal, a <laughs> human <laughs> being, anybody. I yes. care. I love these roses. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna connect with you, and I'm going to give you. An, a, a, an attentive, emotionally responsive human being to talk to and engage with. I, I think that like one of the directions that you're going to is that your concept of what it m takes to be a human person is to make sure that people love equally. Yeah. And I think that that's a good direction for you to go to. 
Well, I would agree. Modern Mail is only the first book. Uh, there oh. are five more oh, what? that I haven't published yet. Oh, geez. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it all it comes full circle into uh, – it's really all self-development. Um, Modern Mail was very kind of ego-driven self-development. It wasn't um, – you know, there's no universal principles in there. There's mm. not a lot of like, hey, self-love. It's more about, hey, you're a dude and probably also an idiot. So let me teach you <laughs> how to be get better with girls. Um, and I mean, it was written like that because I wrote it to print it out to bitch Mac, the next person that said that I was lucky with women. And I was like, they're like, oh, you're good looking. So you probably get all the girls. And I'm like, no, I've been good, good looking my whole life, but I was awkward for the first half of it. And I didn't get any girls. So I know that it wasn't the good looks. And I'm like, then I, I learned how to be a, a, a human being. And now, uh, yeah, I do okay. Um, <laughs> He's like a lot. He glosses. Eh, I do okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. No, I'm all okay. right. I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got our journey. So that's, that's part of yours. And you always talk about your struggles and. Being a fat kid and whatnot. Well, I think that's part of the reason why I, you know, I, I can, I can understand w when people have been through s some, you know, challenging circumstances because I was, I went through um, some amazingly challenging circumstances early in life. Well, we'll get to talk another time. I think about my book. They'll be releasing it. Before oh the yeah. The summer. So. Okay, cool. I didn't even know you're writing a book. And I'll get to have right. explain a lot of my perspective as well. Yeah. Being in this life and this journey and this kind of different, unstereotypical transition i guess when are you today. releasing it i think they want to release it after my birthday like the 30th which is this month okay Ooh, i think they want to do it like right after my birthday it should be releasing cool who's uh what, what publishing house riverdale publishing nice yeah, there we go <laughs> nice killer that's my first one so. thank you awesome awesome yeah no i mean i i self-published my first book and i just went through <laughs> like i think we republished it five times it's still not done so I still have more stuff to add to that. But another reason that I bring that up is because I, I, I do date coaching and mm -hmm. I get men and then I started to get women and then I started to get gay guys mm -hmm. and I've never coached transsexual people. Um, is mm -hmm. that, is that offensive? Transsexual people? No. Is that calling somebody like African American? Same as calling You're them transgender. You're okay. all right on that one. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm trying to be very, uh, I would just, okay. So have a normal conversation. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead. Is it, <laughs> I've, I've never coached a transgender person before. Um, but one of the things, one of the suggestions that I got about the book was like, I started writing modern mail and then I started coaching girls and I was like, okay, well now I need to write a book for girls. And I found that it's almost, I mean, maybe 70% of the book is the same. The same stuff I would say to girls is the same stuff I would say to guys. It's universally like, Love yourself, be confident, be driven, and tailor up the stuff on the outside to match the stuff on the inside. And then, you know, it's like, so it doesn't really need to be that specific. Then, then you just boil it down to masculine and feminine, and then it applies to everyone. Mm. It could be a dating guide for anyone, depending on where they find themselves on the masculine and feminine scale. There you have it. Yeah. So transgender, I suppose, could benefit <laughs> from that as well. Mm -hmm. Except for usually that we don't have any problem with that. Exactly. What? <laughs> we don't really have any problems because I think I we're very insightful when it comes to like figuring out where or well, exactly what we know exactly what men want. Let's just be realistic. Hashtag real <laughs> Yeah, there's, a, there's like a serious double threat there, which is like really really cool. Well, it's a reality yeah. for sure, and I think because trans people are so overly sexualized in the any term of media or whatever, it, we have a huge boys know how to find the trans girls. <laughs> they know exactly what to do. Yeah, they always try. And, they always find me. <laughs> it's they ridiculous. Find me. I'm just like on the street waiting on the, waiting for the bus, and they just find me. They they, they circle around the street, and then be like, "Hey, you need a ride?" Oh, and I'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> well, don't do that." <laughs> I don't even have chocolate. That's so okay. <laughs> so you guys, I, so th there's no problem whatsoever. You guys are. Well, I I've assimilated. Yes. Okay, so but. you guys are or girls. Sorry, girls proper. Um, you girls are. Probably getting laid more than I am. Uh, I if they're ladies, they're not gonna. <laughs> I like how I'm talking about my sex. Life. Sorry, like, sorry. Like, We're just, just. Sorry. Ladies usually don't really talk about run sex life. mouth on that one. Cause see, I, I guess I, I, I assumed <laughs> that it would be more difficult, but I, it seems like you guys are just killing it. So I'm like, oh, okay, didn't know that. I don't have any problem kidding. with my dating life. Okay, okay. Um, I don't date. I've learned. I've actually I'm been right learning to date. I've been learning to date. Picky, picky, this picky. past year and a half has been the first time that I've really, really experienced like putting myself out there in a, in a format and just normal society. Are you on Tinder? Maybe. 
<laughs> I don't know. My, my girlfriend signed me up for all these things when I first started dating. My girlfriend signed because me up for Tinder too. I wasn't on so. any technological <laughs> sites happened. like that because I have a, I guess, an image in the yeah. world people can automatically contact anyway. So I never thought to do that. My girlfriend's kind of put me out there in that way. So I've been learning today. You know, it's a really good dating app, but it's better than Tinder. Uh, it's called Happen, and <laughs> it it basically like it gives. Never heard of it. It matches you based on people that like you've you've been near. <gasps> So no. what about there's Wait. a new one being developed that is associated with like friends of friends through your Facebook and social media set that you actually know. So That's it's like smart. people that you actually know. That's smart. I like see most of those yeah. people on Tinder anyway. But I mean, I feel like <laughs> no, I'm not on Tinder. Just kidding. <laughs> I know. I've only I said know. It like five it's times. horrible. Oh, but no, it happens great because like it, it, it doesn't like it like tracks your GPS location at all times, which is, you know, it's just so stalker. Definitely. It's definitely the NSA. Um, oh God. But um what it does is anybody that you've been within a 10 mile radius of it'll like if they're on the app it'll show you who's been in that area and then you just kind of you click on it and if they click like on dane you, cook yeah that it, one time it's like tinder but like <laughs> <laughs> i matched him and then he all the people me. that i found on that happen to be like Blasting. way more professional <laughs> and like put together and they're they're all like a little older and, yeah it's uh, definitely quality there we go that's the word i was searching for yeah, that's usually not been my, my range of dating in that format. I mean, I like to browse those kinds of things and, like, see what my options are. Yeah. But I haven't, like, you know, dove head first. And I was in two long-term relationships my entire adult life. Literally, for nine years of my life, I was with two men. Like, period. Oh, wow. Yeah, Did we not just have this conversation, yeah. <laughs> though, about dating? You were like, well, why don't you just pick one and do it? And I was like, it's like driving through a fast food place. It's always available, especially one that's open True. 24 hours a day. True. And they're probably going to get my order wrong anyway, so Ooh. I could or I couldn't. <laughs> That's so true. I could, just eat 24, back to that. <laughs> <laughs> just forget Carl's Jr. <laughs> so we need to find you the eat 24 of penal yeah. availability. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to put it? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I just I believe I'm in a you, little Sarah. bit more emotionally <laughs> responsible than just like, number four, I'll take him. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You have to have, a, a, I think, build an emotional connection. Absolutely. But I think you do have to put yourself out there, though, to be able yes. to do that. It does seem far-fetched, but if we've learned anything from the 80s, you know, all of the 80s movies on the future, like Blade Runner and, you know, uh, <laughs> it's like Terminator, like all that. Like, literally, there's a company called Cyberdyne that is developing robotic legs that now uh, can make it so that people with, uh, with spinal injuries and stuff can walk. That was some nerdy kid's dream when he back in the day, and he made it happen. Yeah, but I mean, it was it's like in the <laughs> Daddy, 80s, the idea right. of that was so crazy, <laughs> and now we have hoverboards. So I yeah. could see us in the in you know the next 20, 50 years actually having drive through. You know, you could just drive through and you you know, scroll through, pick pick the girl or guy, and they kind of walk out and sit in your car. You go around the park. It's gonna and, be yeah. so bizarre. I think they do that in Asia already. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they, yeah. There are definitely <laughs> some f forms of I that. I saw going a documentary already. where they had, had like this like glass door. Yeah. It's a country in Asia. It had this glass window, and they had all the girls that were just there sitting in like an order thing, and the guy would just picked them, and it was like boom with me. Like Damn. that's what it was. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, that. that's slightly very so, problematic. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, not if they get paid well. That's the one thing about it being illegal out here is it 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 also makes it so that the girls that do do that behind closed doors make a shit ton of money. So, I mean, you just see him running around like Bentleys and, and stuff. And I'm like, you go, girl. Like, yeah. hey, if it doesn't bother you, fuck it, you know? And and I respect the hustle. Like, Gotta respect the hustler. It's not too far-fetched, though. <laughs> I mean, as far as, like, dating shows out there and things. Plus, like, if, what was that? Like, if, you, if, you, if you hated girls so in L.A. for – If you hated girls in L.A. for doing that, then you wouldn't have any friends because it's – it's so common. <laughs> it's very common. <laughs> it's like literally er like <laughs> every girl in LA has a sugar daddy or something. Um, anyways. That's smart. Maybe I should get one. Of what was that one show that I'm thinking of? Was that the Love <laughs> Connection <laughs> where they had like three people and then they, like, they couldn't see each other? But then do you remember the oh, show? I remember that mm. show. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love <laughs> Connection. Like a blind date or something. Yeah, like we're not going to like the sex slave trade no. talk there. <laughs> I'm thinking like what were those like dating shows back in the day that weren't like what we have now. Yeah. Cool. So okay. what have you guys got to cool. promote? Yeah. What have you, what are you, where can people find you? Do you want to promote? Social media, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, the T H E Mia Isabella, M I A Isabella. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. My site, Mia Isabella.com, if you're curious. And my upcoming book soon. Yeah. Pick it up, guys. <laughs> and you? And Magic of Isis. That's my performance. Okay. Nice. So M A G I C O F is is. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> mm hmm. 
is is. But the safe one, like the the Egyptian goddess, not the one overseas. Right. That everyone's scared. Of. <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify, just to clarify, you can be scared of me though. I'll, I'm an angel. Isn't that Dionysus? Is it Isis? Egyptian goddess Isis. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of a different one. Maybe it's Greek. Yeah. Dionysus. Yeah. Who's that? Okay. <laughs> You know, uh, on a daily basis, I go through so much different stuff that like there's literally no RAM left in my brain to actually remember stuff. And I'm like, wait, I think I knew that. But that was like 10 years ago. But really, it was a year ago. I just I've, I've loaded, this week too, I've loaded 10 week. years of facts into my brain. Um, <laughs> Good for you. And Sarah, where can people stalk you? You can just stalk me at Sarah Beth Harris on Instagram. There's plenty of stalkers. Doing All of my friends me. and fan base have <laughs> now. Mr. Jared's friends are finding their way to my phone numbers <laughs> <laughs> through Facebook, which... Thanks oh for that, God. whoever really gave him my number, because well, I swear it's not on there. And now you told everybody that your number is available through Facebook, so you should probably fix Great that. Marketing. probably going to have to figure it out. I really don't well, think hey. it's on there. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> More op- you know, options. <laughs> call me. No, I'm totally kidding. Don't call me. Don't text me. <laughs> yes, but if you want to stalk Sarah, you Jesus, can find her on yeah, Instagram at Sarah Beth Harris. Harris. That's right. Because she has a, uh, uh, what is that? Because I have better search engine optimization that way. Because Sarah Chapman, <laughs> there's just too many of them. I'm okay. drowning in this sea of Sarah <laughs> Sarah Beth Harris. Sarah Beth Harris. Sarah Beth Harris. All right. Well, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. That's it for tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Modern Mail Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistosky right here on LA Talk Radio.